Welcome to part B of this first of two slideshows about microfossils. In this episode, we sketch the characteristics of the four groups above the arrow on this slide. Those previously discussed in part 1a have a purple cast. The two groups under the calcium carbonate heading are both nanofossils, that is, their maximum dimension is less than 50 microns. Scoccolithophores are among the other protists on the University of California chart and are classed as phytoplankton. Many coccolithophores resemble the classic spheres pictured here, but others, with or without spines, are oval or basket-shaped. The covering plates, called coccoliths, range widely in shape and in the length of their stripes. And as shown here, their geometry may change markedly during the life of an individual. As these scanning electron images show, their debris is a major constituent of chalk. Coccolithophores and their coccolith scales first occur in uh, strata of late Triassic age and with marked fluctuations in abundance continue up to the present. Common in today's seas, they prefer nutrient-poor water where they sometimes are so numerous as to form blooms. As they all use chlorophyll to convert the sun's energy to glucose, they live in the 350 feet below the water surface to which light penetrates. Over the almost 20 million years of the Campanian and Maastrichtian stages of the later Cretaceous, coccolithophores in the sea that covered what is now northwestern Europe were so numerous that their coccoliths form the major portion of the more than 100 meters of chalk that forms the white cliffs of Dover and the walls of the caves and tunnels that house the wine maturation storages of northern France. Coccoliths are employed in biostratigraphy. For a number of their form species had a nearly worldwide distribution. Their use requires intensive study using a scanning electron microscope or as pictured on this slide, a 100 power or more light microscope. The ubiquity of some forms of coccolith makes them useful where larger fossils are absent. Coccoliths also provide data for climate and water temperature studies. Calcareous nanofossils are the constructions of calcium carbonate that comprise the framework or skeleton of single-celled algae. They are produced inside the cell and in some cases migrate to its surface. The variety in the form of these constructions is almost limitless, but as shown here, they have been categorized. Most are 20 microns or less in major diameter. They occur in marine formations that range in age from late Triassic to recent, but are more abundant in Jurassic and later strata. Their variety and the changes in their assemblages make them excellent markers and also good indicators of paleoenvironment. Only the foraminifers have been more thoroughly investigated and used more frequently for correlation and studies of climate. Calcareous nanofossils are found only in strata containing some calcium carbonate. Calcispheres are microfossil-sized hollow or calcite-filled globes formed by two spherical layers of calcite. The larger balls thus formed range up to 500 microns in diameter in Paleozoic strata. It has been proposed that these large spheres are a part 
of the reproductive mechanisms of algae. Smaller ones occur in all younger sedimentary strata that have a, an appreciable content of calcium carbonate. There, most of these Ansertiacidus microfossils have been thought to be the cysts of dinoflagellates. Several form genera and a considerable number of form species have been denominated for they are used to confirm the correlation of Mesozoic stages worldwide. Criteria for identification of form, genera, and species include the range of diameters of the spheres of any one population, the ratio of that diameter to the thickness of the test wall, the thickness of the wall, and if they are distinguishable, that of each of its two layers and its percentage of the total thickness of the wall, and the orientation and range in size of the calcite crystals that comprise the wall. Silicoflagellates are secretions of silica in the form of hollow bars and rods that a unicellular alga develops into a supporting framework at one stage of its life cycle. The constructions range in size from 2 to 65 micrometers and vary in complexity from a simple two-dimensional frame to basket-like constructions of heavy spikes and bars. But these constructions never approach the delicate interlacements and patterns of diatoms and radiolaria. Silicoflagellates are common in sedimentary strata ranging in age from Cretaceous to recent, and today become abundant enough to form blooms. Paleontologists use them for correlation so have erected several morphogenera and a considerable number of morpho species, some of which are figured here. The Abridians are set apart from other silicoflagellates because the living ones have a large nucleus and lack chromatophores. All differ from other silicoflagellates for their skeletons are solid, not hollow, bars. They occur only in Paleocene and younger strata. Where they are found in sufficient numbers, their form genera and species permit a zonation. Most are nanofossils, but pictured on the top row of the slide are some larger ones. Parts uh, 1A and 1B are two of four slideshows that together will comprise a reasonably complete overview, but far from exhaustive treatment of microfossils. As reiterated on this slide, the schema used here to categorize these tiny fossils is based on the nature of their integument. Organic fatty acids, calcium carbonate, limestone, silicon dioxide, silica, and calcium phosphate, apatite. It is but one inconclusive method for discriminating relationships. From another standpoint, all fossils may be grouped according to their lifestyle and habitat. Using these criteria, most of the protists reviewed in these two shows are considered plant-like. They use chlorophyll to produce energy from sunlight, but tintinids are zooplankton, animal-like protozoans that capture and ingest other plankton. And relationships between the marine animals, supposedly worms, postulated to have produced chitinozoans, ketognaths, and scalicodonts, are unknowable. Part 2a reviews only the foraminifers. These protozoans, living and fossil, have been studied more thoroughly than most other single-celled microfossils. Details of their evolution are better known than those of other microorganisms because of their extraordinary diversity and the rapidity of their evolution. If you looked and listened this far, you will want to see part two.